The link between obesity and cancer has been established and is reflected clearly in the statistics. The cause is less clear. Most researchers believe that inflammation caused by visceral fat, so the fat surrounding our organs causing central obesity is to blame. This may be due to the uh, low oxygen environment created by fat deposits, as well as hormonal changes associated with excess body fat. Some of the cancers linked to obesity are breast, uterine, colorectal, pancreatic, kidney, and esophageal cancers. Now, in my opinion, the type of fat making up our fat cells matters a lot here as well. And so again, we shouldn't argue about that obesity is really at the root cause here. But again, if we go a bit more specific, what type of uh, eating patterns that lead to obesity are most strongly associated with cancer? I think we need to look into this. The bottom line is that we should all strive to optimize our body fat. So if we fall in the category of being obese, if we have too much body fat, we should really do the best we can to eat better doesn't mean that going on a low calorie diet obviously doesn't work. I did several videos on tips how to do that, you know, by increasing your protein uh, intake, by, you know, decreasing carbohydrates and moderating your fats and exercising, of course. And these things work very well without feeling hungry and all that. So changing what we eat, when we eat, and being smart about what we eat as well, right? But the point is also that the contributor to the more dangerous um, uh, growth of these fat cells, of this fat hypertrophy. So these fat cells, when we eat oils that are uh, predominantly seed oils that are very rich in omega-6 linoleic acid. And these are fats that are newer to us. They started about in the 1910s. We're talking about seed oils, for example, soybean, cottonseed, canola, corn, sunflower, and so on. And I did several videos about this. So these oils are very rich in a particular fat that's called omega-6 linoleic acid, really long term. Uh, it is something that we don't use easily as energy. Actually, for the most part, these are uh, structural and signaling molecules. And our ratio to eat those fats, because you know, when you look at fats in general, um, even animal fats will have some of those, but very little, uh, might be 1% or 2% in there. If you eat something like corn oil, suddenly you have 40% omega-6 linoleic fatty acids. So this is a huge difference, obviously. So fat is not equal to fat. With the onset of eating these seed oils, when we look at the statistics, when did we start to develop this real um, uh, problem of having a lot of people develop cancer, a lot of people that have heart disease, you know, a lot of people that have diabetes, this really started with the onset of these oils. And that's actually very important. When you look at these curves, 1910 with Crisco, Crisco's crystallized cottonseed oil, that's how we started consuming these oils on a larger scale, because it was these, um, you know, um, cotton seeds that were left over from the harvest that nobody could do anything with and said, what are we going to do with this stuff? Let's use a chemical to extract this. Then we're going to um, refine it. We're going to um, deodorize it because it was the sludge that wasn't very nice and appealing. And ultimately, we clarify it and then we slap a label on it and we market it as cooking oil. We can also, you know, partially hydrogenize it. And now we have margarine, right? We can do all these things. So uh, these artificially produced oils started around that time, around 1910. Before that, what do we cook with? We use things like butter, like beef tallow. If we had olive oil, that was something we've used for many years. Avocado oil. This was more in countries where this was more, uh, where these uh, uh, fruits were more uh, present, of course. But when you think about, uh, we used natural oils. We used either um, animal fats or we used even uh, fats from, from, from pigs, you know, from, which is basically, you have lard and we used um, beef tallow and then butter and all these things. Those were either saturated fats or they were monounsaturated fats, as in the case of olive oil and, of course, in avocado oil, right? Um, and in tropical countries, they use coconut oil. Then, early 1900s, we said, hey, let's be progressive here and let's get these um, machineries uh, and, and factories that we can build to make oil from any kind of seed with using extractants and all this kind of stuff. Anyway, when you look at the curves from there of disease, when we look at the consumption of these oils and the onset of disease, they're almost parallel, right? As we're eating more of these oils, we are getting sicker and sicker and sicker. Now, of course, this is a correlation. And researchers always say, well, you know, correlation does not equal causation. That's true. But if you have a very strong correlation over many, many years, <laughs> we have to take this seriously. Because one thing I found is, when you do interventional studies, you know, double-blinded placebo-controlled interventional studies, which are the gold standard to find out if something is harmful or not, this does not work very well with humans. Why is that? You would have to lock people up in, you know, uh, uh, in a room, feed them controlled meals. So you really control what they're eating, right? And really monitor them very well. That is ethically absolutely not possible. The closest we got to this was the Minnesota coronary experiment, which really failed. And I did a video about this, if you want to look that up. The Minnesota coronary experiment uh, is where they did this actually to people that were in mental hospitals and in prisons, which is really not, not legal. And it was, which was not a good thing to do to these people as well. 
but they did not prove that you know saturated fats cause actually heart disease you know actually back then in that, in that experiment the people that died predominantly were people eating more of those um polyunsaturated seed oil fats from corn oil that's what they had in that group so anyway there's this correlation so why do these ma oils matter so much? So when we consume this omega-6 linoleic acid from seed oils, and that's often marked as vegetable oil and whatnot, it does not get um, processed the same as regular fats do. So we don't really use it much for energy, but we store it and it causes a fat cell hypertrophy. That's just mean the cells getting bigger and bigger and bigger. And it loses its ability to divide as it should. And it loses its ability to communicate with other cells in ways that it should. Because fat cells are not just these cells that are, that are, that are sitting there, not doing anything. They, can, they produce hormones. They can commute with each other. Uh, sorry, they can, can communicate with each other. And they can signal with each other. And they're losing a lot of this uh, uh, signaling, really. So this is a very interesting one. And since we have now fat cells that behave differently, in my opinion, this strongly leads also to the development of cancer because what happens with these oils as they're stored in these cells, as they're sitting there, again, we can't really process them. They're sitting there making these cells sick and bigger. They kind of break down, they oxidize. They, and these breakdown products, and you can read this in many studies, are highly toxic. So the breakdown products from fats that are very rich in this omega-6 linoleic acid are very carcinogenic, so cancer-causing. And they damage mitochondria. And this ultimately can lead to development of cancer. Um, I did a video on uh, metabolic theory, which really shows that more likely it starts in the mitochondria of a cell where, you know, radical oxygen species damage mitochondria, causing mi mitochondrial malfunction, which then ultimately will also lead to damage of the uh, nucleus of the DNA, thereby uh, developing a cell that is a cancer cell. So I think it matters a great lot what we eat in terms of fat. Then, then of course, ultimately, um, you know, when we are obese, we have a lot more of this uh, fatty tissue we carry around with us. You know, this low oxygen environment and high inflammation that certainly contributes. So inflammatory processes, yes. Low oxygen environment, yes. And then type of oil we're consuming. These, I think, are the main drivers why obesity is contributing to cancer. I think we need to approach this also from the perspective of what can we do about becoming healthier, not just losing this fat, but replacing a bad oil with a good oil, right? Weeding out these seed oils, replacing them with small amounts. And this is not really sort of what people think, oh, now I can eat many other oils, many saturated fats. I can eat an unlimited amount of that. That is incorrect. It is basically, um, I always advise people, cut out your seed oils, replace with a very small amount only as needed of healthier oils. And that could be uh, coconut oil. It could be, of course, what most people cook with now is avocado oil or olive oil and, of course, butter or beef tallow, you know, if you like. That's actually very good oil as well. So I think that's important to realize that we don't get rid of the bad oil and guzzle other, other good oils. We should be very selective with that as well. So where do we predominantly find these um, you know, omega-6 linoleic acid-rich seed oils in our diet, well, they're in junk food. You read any label of, um, I would call this processed foods or junk foods, they will have soybean oil, they will have canola oil, they will have sunflower oil. It's in all the foods that we really classify as processed or junk foods. And this is something that is really very, very concerning, of course, right? Now, when you read through the literature, and this is very interesting to me, the industry, and remember, this seed oil industry is pretty powerful, but they influence us also in terms of uh, how we view these uh, this information politically, right? And when you look at uh, data that shows that uh, seed oils are contributing to cancer and heart disease, it's suddenly labeled as a right-wing conspiracy theory. And I found that shocking, to be honest with you. I am neither right-wing, left-wing, nor anything like that. I'm a very apolitical person. And it's interesting, as a physician and researcher, uh, that suddenly... Anything that goes against certain, you know, interests in the industry is politically labeled. I think that's absolutely ridiculous. If the industry feels so strongly about promoting them, and I know the American Heart Association still is, um, but I also tell you why I think that is, because, well, the American Heart Association says, if you eat vegetable oils, vegetable oils in quotation marks, so seed oils, they can lower your LDL cholesterol. And that's absolutely true. They can slightly lower LDL cholesterol. However, they also contribute to oxidation of your LDL particle, because it is exactly at that point in the LDL particle, at, at, at those oils. Think of LDL, low density lipoprotein, is, is like a bus carrying several fats. And the fats in there that oxidize the easiest or the most is omega-6 linoleic acid from seed oils. And an LDL particle that is not oxidized is harmless. It's good for us. We need these fats. We need cholesterol. 
we needed to make hormones. We needed in the membranes of our cells. We needed in our brain for the neurons. So these are very good fats. But when this particle becomes oxidized, and again, the part that oxidizes is this omega-6 linoleic acid, then this oxidized <coughs> fat can essentially enter through the uh, endothelial membrane into the lining of our arteries and cause other atherosclerosis and many other problems. But again, that's the part where it oxidizes. How long do these fats, how long do these omega-6 linoleic acids, particle fats, stay in our fat cells? How long are they stored? How long are they swarming around in our, in our system, right? And it is really up to two years. So when we do a study, I mentioned earlier that interventional studies um, are, are not very good here. You would really have to isolate people from birth and feed them a particular diet versus another group that you feed a regular American junk diet, right? And then you compare. So the only studies that I find really interesting here are studies done in animals, in, in mice, because here we can do this, right? We can separate two groups of mice one of them we feed the um, you know seed oils, the omega six and omega oils. The other group we might feed uh, more natural fats or even saturated fats, right? Uh, butter fat, for example. And you will see that the rats always in these studies that are fat, the saturated fat or the uh, more natural fats, they live longer, they're healthier, and they and they thrive, right? Then the criticism, of course, is well, now we have rodents. You cannot compare rodents to humans. Sure, many of the mechanisms are preserved across species, um, especially with these. I think there's enough commonalities. Also, keep this in mind. We have mice that we can genetically engineer to be more human-like in certain respects. So I think actually these are the better studies, in my opinion. If, you know, again, people will split hairs about this. This is what this research shows and this is what that research shows. But again, I don't think we're capable to do a good study in humans. That is my firm opinion. I base a lot of uh, you know uh, my, my opinion here on my clinical experience with my patients. The number one thing, so people come to my clinic for weight loss that I tell them to do is cut out these seed oils. Cut out junk food, of course, but cut out anything that contains these seed oils. And, and they do. They stick with olive oil. They stick with avocado oil, um, butter. And then if you know they're not vegetarian or vegan, they might use beef tallow. Or um, again, they might use coconut oil. And they do extremely well. Just by making that switch, switching to he healthier fats, taking the smaller amounts, they become healthy and they start losing a lot of weight. It's easier for them. Second thing I tell them to do is increase your protein, healthy proteins. Don't take protein powders that are uh, you know, sweetened with artificial sweeteners. Use a protein powder, preferably a whey protein powder that is sweetened with a natural sweetener, for example, you know, stevia or um, you know, xylitol, erythritol, and so on. These are okay, in my opinion. And then again, go with whole simple foods that are not junk foods. Things Don't buy anything in, a, in like a package, buy single ingredient foods. But the number one step, again, is to cut out those seed oils. So they see um, great results, they get healthier, they get mentally sharper, they feel better, and they function better, and the fat comes off a lot faster. So again, the link is clear. Obesity and cancer, that link has been established. No one's arguing about that. The thing that I want to drive home here really with this video is that also depends on which fats we're eating. And I encourage everyone to um, really go to your optimal body fat. You know, don't overdo it. Of course, there's a risk to develop anorexia at some point. But the current theme in the media to just love your body, even if you're fat, even if you're overweight, you know, just be okay with that. That's fine. I think this is very misleading. I think this is very dangerous. Um, we know that obesity is associated with many diseases, including cancer. And we should really be um, uh, helping people to live healthier and better lives, you know. And I think one of them is to optimize your optimize your body fat, right? So just um, putting a new label on things or changing our standards or uh, for certain ethnicities now we're saying, hey, you know what? Maybe we shouldn't use the BMI because it includes too many people uh, of uh, minorities. No, people from minorities a lot of times have a higher genetic risk to develop heart disease. We should help that category of people even more, right? That's very important, right? Keep that in mind. Cut out the bad fats. Use small amounts of good fats. Um, eat healthier, single ingredients, optimize your body fat. And that actually, I think, is the best thing you can do for a healthy immune system, decreasing your risk of cancer, and also decreasing risk of many other diseases like type 2 diabetes, autoimmune diseases, heart disease, and so on. So I think that's the first step. Understanding this, cutting out these oils is very important. Now, if you have comments or, or questions, please subscribe and please leave a comment or question. And I'm highly interested to see which oils you're using and for what kind of dishes and how you went about cutting out, you know, uh, processed junk foods, including these seed oils, and what you've noticed, uh, particularly when you switched to a small amount of healthier oils. I'm very interested in this, so I'd like to hear. And thank you so much.